Hey everyone! Today I want to use some basic game theory to make a point about how society works. And to do this, I need to take us back to that classic 90s movie, Good Will Hunting. So in Good Will Hunting, there's this scene in which Minnie Driver's character is flirting with Matt Damon's character in a bar. And at a certain point, she offers him her phone number and says we should go out for coffee sometime. Here's what happens. There's my number. So maybe we can go out for coffee sometime. All right, yeah. Maybe we could just get together and eat a bunch of caramels. What do you mean? When you think about it, it's as arbitrary as drinking coffee. Oh, uh, yeah. OK. Uh, right then. First off, there are in fact good reasons for going out for coffee instead of a bowl of caramels when you're getting to know someone, right? It's not completely arbitrary. Coffee is inexpensive, uh, it's convenient, there are coffee shops all over the city, it's low commitment, like it doesn't take very long to drink a cup of coffee, so you're not going to be stuck sitting there awkwardly with someone who you're not getting along with. And it's public, you know, you don't have to go over to a stranger's apartment in order to get to know someone. And sure, you could imagine an alternate society in which Caramel shops were actually all over town, and you could sit down and get a $2 bowl of caramels and get to know a new friend over that. Um, and in that alternate universe, I'm sure Matt Damon's character would have been saying, why go out for caramels? Couldn't we just as easily get a cup of coffee together? It's just as arbitrary. So what I think he was really missing there was that coffee was a good suggestion, not just because of some inherent property of coffee or of coffee shops, but it was a good suggestion because it's the default suggestion. There's this concept in game theory called a shelling point, and it's basically the uh, default option that people choose because they expect each other to choose it. So the classic example is in uh, a city, let's say you're trying to meet up with a friend in some city and you, for whatever reason, haven't coordinated ahead of time about where to meet them. So you just have to try to guess where can I go that my friend will be most likely to show up? And you know that your friend is trying to guess the same thing about you. And in practice, there are, in fact, these shelling points where two strangers can coordinate without prior communication because I expect that you expect that I expect that you expect, etc., to go to the fountain, for example. Anyway, my argument here is that coffee in this situation is a social shelling point. So coffee is a good option to suggest because someone in Mini Driver's situation can reasonably expect the person she's talking to to expect her to invite them for coffee and not for caramels, say. Um, and what that shelling point option does is it allows her to communicate a bunch of useful information. She can communicate her intentions, that she's hoping to uh, get to know someone in a public, low commitment, low uh, stress kind of way. And she can also communicate something valuable about herself, which is that she understands and has basic respect for social conventions. This is a useful thing to be able to say or show about yourself. Obviously, I wouldn't be on this rant if this mistake were limited to a particular scene in a 90s movie. In fact, I've heard many people say things kind of equivalent to what Matt Damon's character said in Goodwill Hunting. Um, why do we have to talk about the weather when we're making small talk? It's so arbitrary. Why couldn't we talk about something else? Um, why do we have to dress this way instead of that way? Why do we use words this way instead of that way? You know, it's not that you should never diverge from social shelling points at all. I think often there are good reasons to. But in, in these criticisms, it usually the implication is People who follow defaults are being sheep. If they could think for themselves, they would do something different. And what I think the critics are missing there is, well, first, there often is a good reason why this particular thing became the default instead of something else. You know, there's a reason that coffee is more well-suited to first meetings than, say, bowls of caramels. Um, this is what I've called in the past the Chesterton's fence fallacy. The idea that uh, you should not knock down a fence until you have some good idea of why it was put there in the first place. And these uh, social shelling points that are sort of unofficially agreed upon, um, they allow us to communicate and signal information back and forth to each other that, that allows us to make better informed choices, and they allow us to coordinate. 